All right, in this video, I'm going to show you how to bind the ends of the motors on the Cheerson CX-10. So what happens is over time, when you're flying these, these clips here on the end, they, they get bumped on right here, and they're not very strong. And that will, as you can see, that this one's broken off completely. That allows this to flex too much in here. The motor's not, not held still in there. It's allowed to move slightly. But the biggest problem is, is it causes vibrations on the control board. So your senses on there are vibrating and it causes some pretty erratic flight. And you can't tune it out. You can't, um, uh, by, um, with the accelerometers, by um, initiating this, reinitiating the accelerometers, uh, calibrating them, uh, you can't clear that up. So you've got to get a good, bind that somehow. And these cases are pretty cheap. They're only a few dollars back on Banggood. But you're going to break them again. So probably best just to bind them with wire so here this one's bound with wire so what I do is I run a piece of wire at the end of each arm and that binds the arm together and then I want to bind this whole case together to hold the motor in place so if you bind this one without binding this one this is still going to split here a bit so you're going to want to run another wire over the tab where the original clip went it's pretty simple and as you can see I actually don't even run the screws in here because um, they just tend to vibrate and fall out anyways unless you glue them or um, use some thread locker or, uh, in there to keep them in place. So I just tend to avoid them. As you can see, the board's sandwiched in there pretty good. There's no vibration getting uh, to the board and this thing flies great. In fact, my last review, uh, my original review on the CX-10 uh, that you can see on my channel, actually uh, that was with it fully bound like this. The review had it fully bound and it flew great. So anyways, let's get to binding. First of all, um, once a couple of them break, you might as well just do this to each arm. So what I use are these sandwich ties. It's probably the thinnest wire that I can find that's easy to get a hold of. Um, and all I do is I just rip off the paper. I just use my thumb to, to rip it off. Once you get one end ripped, the other end is kind of a pain because you've got nothing to grab onto. It slides out of your hand, but it's doable. And then you just use your thumbnail to strip the rest of it away. Get as much of the glue off of there that you can. And there you go. A clean piece of wire. Very small. I don't know if you could get it in a florist or wire that small. I just find these sand strips so much easier to work with. They don't add a lot of weight. So first of all, as you can see here, I usually like to have the knot for the one at the, just here at the the point this point of the arm here. I usually like to have the knot at the top. It makes it a little bit, a bit easier to work with. So we're going to take and just overlap a slight little bit. And then these needle nose actually spent all winter out in the snow and he dropped out of my truck and then I found them, cleaned them, oiled them and they were quite rusty and they are just smooth as I get out now but so anyways they look hammered they look, they look in bad shape and I just twist this until it gets nice and tight and you don't need to go too tight the wire will end up breaking here at the knot eventually if you go too far it's not going to ruin the case at all and that was just me slipping off the end of that. Alright, so you are nice and tight and then we'll just take and clip the end of that off. You want to leave a bit of the knot in place so that you have a little knot right there and that keeps it in place. Then the next thing is, as you can see on this one here, I usually like to have this knot down underneath. It's easy to, to, to twist and get the uh, needle nose in, into that point. So. Next, take your wire, get a little paper and stuff still left on there, and I still got a piece of the knot on this end, so we'll cut that off. Alright, so, back to here, here's our point right here. Alright, so we're going to take, and we need to make sure that, uh, and I'm going the wrong way already, we want to pull, I haven't done this for a while. In fact, this wire stays on so well that I haven't done it for a while that it doesn't break. You want to make sure this wire goes over this tab right here. And that's where the original clip went. It just clipped right over that, right there, the colored piece. This one's orange. And you want to make sure it covers that. 
you can twist it with your fingers just to get it started. And then you want to bring your needle nose in and twist a little bit more. All right, and you can see, and a lot of times you'll see that these are loose right here. I already have this one on there, but you'll see it really clamp down on there the more you tighten it. more twists again we don't want to go too far and I don't like to twist right at the right at the base of where the wire meets I like to twist above that and that uh, keeps from pinching it and causing that area to be weak and there we are that's nice and straight a lot of times you'll have little little uh, bends in here from when you were taking the paper off and those will straighten right out all right clip this end off And there you are. So this here is just as good as having the screws and the clips in place. In fact, I almost prefer it that way. You eliminate the weight of the screws, you eliminate the weight of the clips, and you have this thin wire, and I don't think there's much of a weight difference. I don't notice any performance difference at all. So there's a bound arm, and you can run the clips on the other arms. I haven't had, haven't had a balance issue at all. I did that for a while until I broke another one. Once I broke two, I just went ahead and, and, uh, and did them all. So. Here's what it looks like when you have all four done, and it still flies amazing. This is uh, this is actually my first one I bought, and I've never replaced a motor. I've, I've probably got 70 flights on it, 80 flights on it, just a guess, maybe more. And um, yeah, it uh, it's still going strong. So, anyways, if you have any questions, just uh, put them down in the uh, the comments below. And uh, thanks for watching.